gonna call you South Korea. Thinking of you, I'm gonna call you East Pakistan. Thank you. I'm gonna call you South Africa. Think of you. I'm gonna name you South Communist Yemen. E communist, no trash capitalist. Hmm, wait. Huh? Let me have some ideas for a name. Oh! I know! I'm gonna call you South Sandwich Islands. Why am I inbred? Oh, in a bread, not inbred. I was confused. I was born in Alabama. So not only was Great Britain not super creative when it came to naming colonial possessions, but remember, they also weren't super creative when it came to making flags for these places either. It was just like, whatever, as long as the Union Jack is in that top left-hand corner and it has mostly either a blue or red background. I guess in their defense, they did control a lot of the world. I guess they didn't have time to come up with creative stuff for these places. South Communist Yemen was actually just called South Yemen, but yeah, so they were sticking with the themes mostly. They were technically the Democratic People's Republic of Yemen, which sounds awfully like the same name as North Korea has. People's Democratic Republic of Yemen versus Democratic Republic of Korea. They just switched the D and the P. But by far, the greatest name the British have ever come up with is the South Sandwich Islands, which are actually right located next to the South Georgia Islands. Man, they just love to put North, South, East, and West in front of random names, didn't they? Having the state of Georgia and Georgia Georgia, the country just wasn't enough. We also need South Georgia down here too. Remember, we were still a part of the 13 colonies when we had the state of Georgia, so the British are responsible for that as well. I've been trying to make Georgia work for a while now. I love how literally the second sentence on the Wikipedia page for these islands literally has to call them inhospitable. Technically, a thousand people live on these South Georgia islands, so they figured it out. Love that the British looked at these barren islands and said, yep, that looks like a sandwich. <laughs> I love that the person that discovered these islands was named Cook. He was trying to cook something all right. I don't think the UK will ever be able to top this name. What was it like, you know, before, asks the Isle of Man ball. Overrated. Come on, I got you. Responds Ireland. Used to be only one would queue for days on end. They called it culture. And we believed them, continues Ireland. Was too late for anybody, caught on. That wasn't no culture. Was like a virus. A coronation virus, pacifically. Scientists called it SIRS Coronavirus 23. Like, man, just look at what it's doing to all these cells over here. Two normal folks called it Cuvid. And this was ground zero. Everyone died? I. But how bounces the Isle of Man? Started slow like, the queues just kept growing, not a soul could fight it. Wow. They all starved in them queues, for they thought to leave them. And you? Only me Irish Republican antibodies saved me, like. <laughs> I love the country ball skeletons we have here in the corners. But I'm nigh Irish. I'm nigh infected. Poor CR, you gobshite. Been following for phase. I can't do it anymore. Oh, but why'd you come here? To get you to the front of the queue, so you leave me the alone. Oh, th thanks, mister. Guess I'll just wait here. Ye, yeah, I'll be a minute. B -b -b Beled. So I believe this is referencing the long queues for the coronation of King Charles III. These were people setting up tents and shelters to get a good view of the process. What's funny is this is definitely not the first time the British have had problems with queues. They just really like their lines or something. I don't really understand. I guess that's the point here. They call it culture. It's integral to their nationality. Love how similar this image looks to 28 Days Later. That too is a post-apocalypse where nobody else is around in London. The next plague would totally be called Cuvid. Poor Isle of Man. I thought Ireland was gonna save them. Turns out they did the exact opposite, kind of. Oh, it's the last of us, but on the British Isles. All right, Grand Poop. See, picnic areas just right ahead, and go back and grab the basket. And whatever you do, don't go the left path. What'd he say? He knows I can't hear him well since 1917. I'll just follow the path. Hunger is that's you. Hello? Owings, grand poop. Oh, Ike didn't know Austria invited you too. What a nice boy. What's this? Barbed wire? Those Italians must have done this. Grand poop, I wouldn't do that if I was nonsense, my boy. Still have these wire cutters your uncle gave me. There we go. Now to go to the picnic. Rumble, 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 rumble. What's that noise? Bridge your wall, bridge your wall. Whee! 
<laughs> Currency! Ah, you get away from me! This looks like a good time to leave, says Hungry. Freedom! Daily polygraph, old man collapses, iron curtain. A confused former empire totally accidentally ended the Cold War when opened the Hungarian border due to picnic-related incident. This is the last time I am taking out of the rest home. I like how this last line that's cut off down here, USSR says, Light, I'm too broke to fix it. So this is about the pan-European picnic that took place in 1989. It was held right next to the Austrian and Hungarian borders. That's why they made some cameos. Funny enough, Otto von Habsburg was a key figure in the event. He was actually the last crowned prince of Austria-Hungary. He ended up being almost 100 years old. I kind of forget how both Austria and Hungary were on opposite sides during the entirety of the Cold War. So this little meeting that happened along the border really did have a huge impact. A ton of people did actually cross during this time as well. And I thought this was kind of going to be mostly a metaphorical comic. No, this is this is kind of what happened. All caused by an Austro-Hungarian himself. Ah, uh, fall, picnic, get it? Because autumn. Canada, your economy is strong and big. How you make, sell? Oh, Laos, you sweet summer child. What you need is a national economic identity. You know, like German engineering or Italian style or even how China is super cheap. 100% not surveillance, very good price. Ooh, Huawei. And then there's also what Japan does too. Oh, I get now. Thank you. I use great Laos reputation to sell stuff. Uh, on Second thought, ever heard of copyright infringement? Lousy TNT unexploded ordinance. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Russia, Turkey, Ukraine, Greece, USA, Israel, Bangladesh, I think that's India or somebody. Taiwan, Syria, yeah, they're, they're not gonna like that. Oh, it's American made unexploded. Or oh, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, the country of Laos to this day still has a lot of, uh, boom booms in them and this is all due to the vietnam war vietnam was right next to laos cambodia got some of that as well but probably not as much as their neighbor to the north since this is where the north vietnamese were actually located yeah they definitely got to be a little bit careful there i think all these balls want to go by though i think this is their cash ah uh, cells are lousy <gasps> My flesh feels out. Meanwhile, this entire building's on fire. Wee woo, wee woo. We come and help, says Austria, I think. Wait, no, that's Poland and Germany. I think somebody's inside. Meanwhile, at the annual sauna championships. Oh, hey, could you turn the heat up a notch and please close the door? Oh, that's who started the fire this whole time. I should have known. Yeah, the Finns do not play with their saunas. Finland has probably won every single annual sauna competition since their existence. Finland already has by far the most saunas in the world with over 2 million of them in the country. There are literally museums dedicated to them. I feel like I haven't used a sauna in literally so long. I gotta admit though, these small hot rooms gotta hit different in the cold country of Finland. It's probably unlike any other experience to be honest. No wonder they love it. When you're talking about these temperatures, yeah, I think that's safe to say. I would just be living in a sauna at that point. Ah, is good day to be Pakistan. Yes! Oh no, it appears that I am into spontaneously combusted. <laughs> We now returning to India's most watched live action comedy show for the last 75 years straight. The Life of Pakistan. Oh, my favorite show. I love this. I mean, I guess this shouldn't be surprising considering the rivalry that these two countries have with each other. I wouldn't be surprised if for both nations, their favorite pastime is just hearing about how bad the other is doing, I guess. Unfortunately, I think Pakistan has been having a little bit more trouble as of recently. Meanwhile, there's Bangladesh just like awkwardly watching from the side. I feel like this is the one thing that truly unites India after all this time. Hey, Canada! Of my man. I heard the Stanley Thing Cup playoff time is happening and was wondering if I could show you my top rosters. I, I mean, rosters of US players. Oh, here they come right now. Hey, boys, we're over here. Sub Pops, burger, burger. Meanwhile, this ball says something similar, burger, burger, with a little bit more French noises added to that. I'm not sure if these disguises are really working for the other Canadian ball. This is a joke about how a lot of the best hockey players are playing for US teams and not Canadian teams. And once again this year, for another Stanley Cup playoff, all the Canadian cities have already been eliminated. The last time a Canadian city won the Stanley Cup was 1993. We're going on 30 years. Canada overall has won 24 Stanley Cups. They were just obviously a lot longer ago. Unfortunately, once again, this will not be their year. Maybe next year? It's crazy because it's not like this is the NBA where there's only one team. There are seven Canadian teams in the NHL. And still they're having trouble. One thing's for sure, there are definitely Canadian people that are still winning the Stanley Cup. They're just winning it for 
other places. I feel like this streak has got to end eventually, right? Uh, as Ireland stares at their phone. Oh no, they're on Instagram. Cyprus out here getting 12,000 likes. It's not fair how all other island clays makes into perfect bodies, but me is stuck with stinky tumor in the north. Hmm, well, must rememberings what they say on the internet, everyone has filters. But in real life, they have ugly bodies. Perhaps I'm even more prettier than the online clout chasers. Meanwhile, uh, I wish I looked as good in real life as I am on Instagram filter. Meanwhile, um, we have a lot of things going on inside there, yeah. One thing's for sure, the island of Cyprus is really good at using those filters on a lot of maps on the internet. Most of the time when you look up a map of Europe, there seems to be nothing suspicious going on over here in this corner. Just looks like a nice, beautiful island to me, although they are a lot smaller than Ireland. You can see this giant Irish blemish from a pretty far view away. But zoom in a little bit closer and take off all the filters, and yeah, it definitely ain't so pretty over here here no more. Actually, when you look at it like this, Ireland is looking 10 times hotter than the island of Cyprus. I don't even know what the heck is going on over here anymore. Maybe things aren't actually that bad after all, Ireland. The only problem is I don't think Ireland can use filters to really hide um, what they got going on. And big thanks to my patrons. I am the kidnapper and I've moved Drew to a Patagonian um, village. Is real. Drew I'm not is a paid Argentinian actor. The grandpa. slow depressing Drew portal collapse. Asher, 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 Hi, Kerry knows best girl, the great Polish, Wiccan, 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 Wicc